Hello and welcome to episode 247 of Fergo and the Freak. I'm that bloke from Rugby League Project, Andrew Ferguson. You can find me on Twitter at AndrewRLP. Joining me as always is the magnificent League Freak, who you can find on Twitter at League Freak. How you going there, mate? I am 100%. That's good. You're yeah. completely over the virus. It, 100% over the virus. I've been uh, getting some stuff done. It's been fantastic. And I'm guessing at the very top of that list of stuff you're getting done was after walking around Bunnings was uh, manscaping. Yeah, well, you know, it's November. It's no nut November. I found that out when I went on Twitter this morning. No and nut November. No nut November, right? They try to kill us. I know, right? Um, and so what better way? to worship your nuts in No Nut November, then to go to manscaped.com, where you can get a variety of the world's best shaving equipment for your man area, your genitals, you know? I personally recommend the Lawnmower 3.0. It is the best of the best. It's like the Cadillac of ball shavers. It has a light on it. It's whisper quiet. It charges up really well. You get a charge out of it and you're away for like weeks. It's fantastic. Um, and if you get the perfect package, you get like these microfiber boxer shorts, which I highly recommend. They really comfort your balls and, and they're fantastic. So go to manscaped.com and if you put in our exclusive code, which is NRL, you get 20% off and free shipping. Now, you can do this if you're in Australia in the in Great Britain, in Canada, manscaping is taken over the world. So go there, put in the code. It works everywhere. Doesn't matter where you are, and uh, support the people that support the podcast. I've got an idea. Instead of no nut November, because that's just torturous. Mm-hmm. How about just nude nuts November? Yeah, maybe that's the way to go. I think we should be pushing that barrow. Smooth nut November. Nude, nude nuts. Yeah, nude nuts is better. Don't, nuts don't, is better. don't fuck up the alliteration, man. That's what works. <laughs> right. um, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a way better way to go around it. There we um, go. Because No Nut November sounds like a horror show. <laughs> that's bad news. You get like two or three days in, you, all of a sudden you're just a, just a pig. You're just a <laughs> pig of a person. Exactly right. Now, um... Yeah, there's a few little stories come up in the last few days. Mm-hmm. The first one I want to get into is yeah. um, the UK have decided that um, now that they've hit 1 million people testing positive to coronavirus and they're getting 21,000 odd people getting the uh, getting the COVID every day and 300 odd dying every day, they thought mm-hmm. maybe we should do a bit of a lockdown. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to lockdown for four weeks. Mm. And... Obviously, that means that Super League's going to have to go on hold. Well, I saw that they said the Premier League might continue. So I wonder if Super League will try to continue, but I wouldn't be shocked if it didn't. I think they've got to the point now where their season is now a complete abomination. Yeah. Um, they brought in this weird rule around their ladder where you it was based on percentages, fair enough, mm-hmm. because some teams have played more games than others. Mm-hmm. But they then also attach this thing where I think in order to qualify for the finals, the team has to play at least 15 games. Yeah. And that's fine for 10 of the 11 remaining teams. Yeah. One team left is Catalan, mm-hmm. and they've won... I mean, they're sitting fourth if you go on competition points only. Yeah. That's how good their season's going. They're doing pretty well. Yeah. But because they've only played 12 games, if they decide to go into the finals after these four weeks, Catalan will not be playing in those finals. And Isn't that it? is yeah. a lot of shit. That really is. Isn't it weird that... Super League has decided to shaft a team that's not in England. It's, Shock. Shock it is, it is very surprising. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a suggestion for them. Okay. Is that they just go, you know what? Let's just say that the regular season now ends. Yeah. And when these four weeks are up, if they decide to go into lockdown over those four weeks, which they should. Yeah. When they come back, say, right, top four teams based on competition points or win percentage, whatever they choose, I don't care who it is, doesn't matter how many games you played, top four teams, first place four, second place third, that's the first week, 
Second week, the two winners of those two games playing the grand final. Wrap the season up. Move on. Yeah, that seems like the way to go. Um, it, it, it really has been a mess. And, I mean, we've seen games cancelled. And, and the weird thing is, too, like some of the games that haven't been cancelled, they've had to delay because of traffic issues and stuff. It's it's just been ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. Just try and wrap it up as quick as possible and... You know, it's been a disaster of a season. They've got a very different situation over there than we've got over here. But what a horrible, horrible year for um, British Rugby League. It is, and it's just, it can't be helped based on the, uh, you know, the fact that it's a worldwide pandemic going on. But Mm -hmm. I think they're mad if they think that trying to extend the season and playing on is going to be of any value because at this stage, they could well be... Yeah, dealing with big numbers of COVID cases well into next year. They need to wrap this season up so that they can try and make sure if COVID's still an issue for them next year, and mm-hmm. I suppose if you're getting 20 or 1,000 cases a day, there's a fair chance it will be. Yeah. They need to go, right, let's, let's wrap this season up and then get all the players in a bubble like what the NRL had mm-hmm. and lock them down completely and say, right, we're just going to play with us lot, empty stadiums, that way, none of the players get coronavirus. We can have a regular season as much as we can and try and get it to start as it normally would and have a regular season from there. They should probably consider scrapping the Challenge Cup next year if coronavirus is still around there, in my view. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, there was an article, I, I didn't read it, but there was an article that was going around yesterday where somebody had written about how difficult it's going to be to keep the Challenge Cup as a major event in the UK. It's been dying for a long, long time now. I mean, it's it's got to the point where if it wasn't such an event, the final being the event, everything around the, the final is just rubbish. The crowds are terrible and everything. So the Challenge Cup is in trouble anyway. I don't know how they fix that. But I, th- I think maybe they need to modernise it, which they won't do. Um, but, yeah, I-, I would agree with you because this season's a write-off and it's all about hoping that you can do something next year. But I agree with you. Like, their numbers are outrageous. Yeah. And I can't see that one month of lockdown is going to help. And I know that their school systems and everything are going to continue. Yep. Like, the kids are going to go to school and everything. Um, college is going to continue, things like that, which is a lot of people still moving around. Yeah, so, they're basically doing what Victoria had with the Stage 3. Yeah, yeah. And a little bit of Stage 4, but not much. I mean, we had complete lockdown here. There were curfews. You were restricted to only travelling within five kilometres of where you lived. Mm-hmm. Um, you couldn't go outside unless it was just to exercise. Mm-hmm. That was it. Um, the only... The only venues that were allowed to be open were, I think, supermarkets and doctors, that sort of thing. Like, mm-hmm. you had to, they had, they scaled it right back to what generally was essential for your survival: health, you know, health professionals and food. Yeah, and the thing is, too, with Victoria, and you know this, I don't need to tell you, but like, it wasn't four weeks. No, God, no, it was nearly four months. Yeah. And that was only when we peaked at 700 a day. Mm-hmm. There are, there are 21,000. Yeah. And the other thing they've got too is they've got, what, nearly three times the population Australia has condensed mm-hmm. in such a small area, not much bigger than Victoria, if it is. Yeah, and I mean, like, even a lot of their houses and the houses are all attached and things like that. It's, yeah. It's like just they're living a... on top of one another. Yeah, yeah, it's such a different sort of situation than what we had, and it's so much worse, and I I just think the idea that four weeks is going to fix it up is kind of ridiculous. If they were going to do this, they should have done this from the very beginning. I mean, their borders, I'm sure that you could jump on a plane right now and fly to England, no problems, hey? I guess, depending on which country you're leaving from. Mm. I mean, you can't really jump on a plane in Victoria and go anywhere. (laughs) <laughs> that's but when you think about it that's pretty much what should be happening yeah yeah um so and that does lead to the next issue which is obviously next year they're supposed to have the rugby league world cup in england yeah 
we, we've talked about this uh, and we've said that we couldn't see it going ahead. I mean, we we must have talked about this two or three months ago now. Yeah. And, and the problems that it would cause. Now that the British government has decided to do a big crackdown and lockdown and all that, there's now a little bit of talk online that it will be postponed to the following season. I've got to say, I think that's a little bit ridiculous. Um, if the host country can't host it, I don't see why it should be postponed. I think that it should just be moved to a country that can hold it. I agree. I like, agree. And the problem like, we've got at the moment is, obviously, I'd love for it to be played somewhere in Europe, mm-hmm. but the moment all of Europe is out of control with the coronavirus pretty much as far as rugby league nations go. Yeah. Like France has probably gone worse at the moment than England. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can't take it to the U S cause <laughs> it's a fucking mess. Mm. Um, and so again, it's going to have to come to the Southern hemisphere and we're not allowing people to go and watch games, um, you know, of, you know, you know, to sell out crowds and stuff. It's only still small crowds here. So, and I suppose then you've got the problem of who's going to attend because it's probably going to be local people only. I doubt we'll be bringing people in from other countries to come and watch. Yeah. Especially people come from countries where the virus is out of control. But if if the World Cup is important, you you do what you've got to do. Like, look, we could hold a Rugby League World Cup in Australia tomorrow, right? Yeah. We could announce all the venues. They're all there. It's all done. Um, New Zealand could do the same. I, I would actually like to see it in New Zealand. I think that would be fantastic for the Kiwis. It would depend upon um, how New Zealand allowed people to come into the country because I think that they're a little bit more strict than Australia is. We're, yeah, they make, we're making people go into quarantine. I, I think it's a lot uh, more strict for Cape, if you're going into New Zealand. Mm. But... Uh, yeah, I, I don't see why. If look, if a country can't host an event, you you move it, and, and I don't understand why we would postpone it. See, I think for me, the ideal situation is you postpone it for two years, but with the uh, the caveat that it's it's going to be open up for tender for a new host nation, and it needs to be a new host nation, as in not. England and not Australia. Oh, it's so boring when it's, it's like, who's going to get it? Oh, it's England. Oh, it's Australia. Remember when the United States was bidding for it and it was like, wow, this mm. looks like it really might go. Oh, no, it's England. It's going to England again. Yeah. I mean, we had a, a fleeting moment where it could have gone to France. We are like, oh, that would have been good. Oh, no, England had to hijack it again. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I'd just like to see a different nation get it. I don't care which one. I don't care if it's a group of nations all close together, say like Central Europe or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, just needs to go somewhere else. Yeah, it's, I agree. It's doing nothing for the the game in England or Australia, if we're honest. Like Australia doesn't need the assistance of the international game. Mm-hmm. It's got the peak. It's got the top quality and you know local club comp there is in the world. Um. New Zealand could definitely do with it. Um, Papua New Guinea, the you know the uh, Pacific Islands, it, it'd be great for them to have the World Cup being played there. Um, obviously, it'd be great if you'd be, be able to put it in the USA or Canada or both. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be great if you could have it exclusively in France. There's some games in Spain which I've mentioned before that'd be fantastic. But it's doing nothing. You know, England's been able to do absolutely nothing off the back of the international game with their their game struggling is at club level. Well, how many, I mean, like the ones that I can remember that have been in England that I've, you know, in my lifetime that I've watched, you've had 95, Mm -hmm. which was probably the last time a a World Cup was people like, oh, wow, the Rugby League World Cup. Then Super League come along and ruined everything. It shit on everything, yes. It really did. Uh, I mean, the next one was 2000, which was also in England, which almost killed the international game. It was run so well. And then the next one after that was in Australia, which was 2008. Yep. In 2013, yeah. What was that one? 
Oh, that was in Wales, England, France, Ireland. England again. So they've had it three times. And then the next one was in Australia and New Zealand. And yep. then Back to England. This, this one's in England again. So, like, and, and during that time, English Rugby League is just, I mean, you look at English Rugby League from 95 to now, it's a shadow of what it was. Um, and, and that's even if you take it from last year, you know, get rid of the effects of coronavirus out of there. What it's done is it's you know, pretty much in every aspect. It's plateaued. And that that's bad because everywhere else it's grown. Mm-hmm. Like the game in Papua New Guinea just keeps growing. In New Zealand it's grown immensely since 95. Um, France. France, Australia. Obviously it's building up in the US and Canada now. Yeah. Um, a lot of European nations are playing a lot more footy now. We've seen the likes of Ukraine, Serbia, Germany, Russia, Netherlands. Italy, Netherlands. You know, and now we've got the game taking off in Africa, and England's just plateaued. It's just gone flat. It's mm-hmm. where it is now is where it was in '95. Well, and look, if you look at their club competition, if you took their club competition today, what they've got right now, and you took it back to 1980 and said to the people, you know what, in 40 years from now, this is where rugby league will be in Great Britain. They'd say, they cry. <laughs> they, 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 you know what? They probably would. They'd be like, they added a French team, and that's it. Like, there's no difference at all. Yeah, it, it's it's incredible how just stagnant it's been for forty whole years, and I just don't see why we would hold up one of our our great events in the game, if not the greatest event we have in rugby league, because the host nation can't host it. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to see it go elsewhere. And look, it could be an opportunity to, to um, if it's still going to be COVID impacted in one or two years' time, cut down the number of teams and still play, have it played in a some nation you know, in Europe that doesn't have the virus but does have a rugby league national side and mm-hmm. invite their national side to play in it. Just change the rules for one year just so you can get it done but also still use it as a promotional tool for that nation you hold it in. So it could be Germany, it could be Serbia, something like that. See, um, this is why I think having a three-year World Cup cycle would be so much better because it, it would mean that, it, like, you hold off a World Cup now. Like, five years between World Cups, that is, for most players, that's their career, right? For the elite players, the absolute elite players... That's half of their career. And for the majority of very good players who could be in this World Cup, they might miss the World Cup altogether. Like, they might have missed their shot. And I think a three-year World Cup cycle, it alleviates those problems. Oh, but, of course. you know, I, I don't, like, why do we do four years? It's just because the Olympics is every four years. It doesn't make sense. Um, well, it doesn't make sense also for the game because four years is something that's only happened... Well, once really, and that was between the last two World Cups. Well, yeah, we, I mean, we ditched it for eight years after yeah. 2000. That was fine. So the first three World Cups were all three years apart. Mm-hmm. And then there was eight years between the 60 and 68 World Cups. And then they went two years, 68, 70, 72, then three years to 75, then back to two for 77. And then they rejigged the format completely for the next two World Cups where and this is back when test we used to have test series. Mm. And so an idea they had to try and help um, test series get big crowds for all three tests was to have the third test, if it was a dead rubber, the third test was still going to be worth something because that would be the World Cup game. Yeah. And so that was an idea they had there, and that was so from 85 to 88, the last test of every series was the World Cup fixture, and then you just had at the end of the period, the two teams at the top of the ladder would play each other in the final. Um, must have been all right. They did it again from 89 to 92. Yeah. And then they want to do the 95 one to celebrate 100 years of rugby league. Um, Super League obviously meant we couldn't have one till 2000. Then I don't know, why did we miss one in 2004 or three or something like that? It was literally because 
the 2001 was such a financial disaster that Australia, and especially for the English game, because, and this is the thing that gets me about Rugby League World Cups in England, it always ends up being like the money disappears and the only people that end up with money controlling it are English people and it's just like the money's gone, you know, didn't make money. And so the 2000 World Cup was so bad for the English game that Australia all of a sudden had to basically play every single bloody test series over in England for years and years and years because if we didn't, they'd go broke. <laughs> there we go. And then and then we reward them for that shocking thing about giving them most of the, the World Cup series since then. Exactly. I, I just it makes no sense whatsoever. You know, we could have a World Cup next year. It, um, just say we're in the position we are now. We could have a World Cup next year in, let's say, New Zealand, because mm-hmm. I think we'll definitely have a bubble between Australia and New Zealand by then where travel won't be too much of a problem. We could have a World Cup in New Zealand next year with just the Southern Hemisphere teams. And I dare say that all of the important teams will be in attendance. <laughs> I'm not even joking, though. Like, oh, no. who's, like, name, like, how many teams are going to win a World Cup before any teams in the Northern Hemisphere? All of them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, the only thing it's going to really deprive us of is when England get absolutely smacked by someone like Fiji, and they're like, where are all these F- good Fijian plays come from? And it's like, do you even have TV, bruh? <laughs> I just think yeah. it's disgraceful that we would that anybody that controls the World Cup would say instead of moving it we have a problem in this country this country has decided that it cannot host the Rugby League World Cup let's just scrap it completely then I find that ridiculous you know it's not like it's the Olympics where you've got to build you know, $2.3 billion worth of white elephant infrastructure to run the fucking thing. The, the stadiums are all there, you know. I know that they've built a, a brick clubhouse for the fucking Salford Roosters and shit like that out of the World Cup money. I don't know what that's all about, by the way. But That's where they know, keep the whistles. Yeah, exactly. Fuck it, they, they must be gold-plated whistles. But we've got <laughs> we've got the infrastructure... We've got the stadiums, and we have everything lined up. We've even got the best players. We've even got who's going to be the world champions in <laughs> this part of the world. And guess what? New Zealand deserves it. And I think that it's selfish. It's really selfish that England has decided that they're going to stop the World Cup. Everyone else wants to play, and they're going to stop it? Nah. We need to take this to New Zealand. We saw the sacrifices the New Zealand Warriors made. They deserve it. They deserve the 2021 Rugby League World Cup. They're ready to run it tomorrow. They don't need any government bullshit going on. They don't need their junkets and their their fucking... uh, They don't need the fake royals and all that bullshit. Just run the fucking thing. Hand somebody the trophy. Say, guess what? None of the Northern Hemisphere teams could turn up. And it was still a great competition, and we got our world champion, and they were always going to be world champion. We you know what? You know what would be good just things. just to just to irritate the poms a bit more. Yeah, we do invite, uh, invite one Northern Hemisphere team, and it's France. Just France, France, and because be- because they should be there because they started the World Cup. I agree. France so should important. be involved in every World Cup. Exactly. So we should bring them over. Mm-hmm. We'll get them all. COVID safe and free and whatnot else. And mm-hmm. we should even let them have any player who's got a name that sounds French to try and bolster their pack. Anyone called Jeremy? Sounds Je- like could be Jerome. Yeah, you're that's in. a good point. Anyone who's had Go Play and likes it, you're in. Jerome Hughes, they'd get him. Yeah. There you go. What other French names are there? Um... Andres. Any, any Andy's, Drews, Andrews, they can go in there. What about anyone with a moustache? Done. Actually, they should come over here and start doing their recruitment at the end of November. Yeah, yeah. That would work. You go, oh, you've got a moustache. You're French. 
Mm-hmm. Do you like cheese? Tick. Have a three point system. Mm-hmm. You got to tick three boxes. Anyone that smokes. Anyone that smokes. Anyone who can do a half ass French accent. Ha ha ha. You're in. <laughs> tick. <laughs> Anybody that's driven a Citroen. <laughs> or seen one. Yeah. <laughs> seen one that works. <laughs> or a Fiat. Or is the Fiat Italian? Fiat's Italian. How oh, dare you? Well, you know, they're all the same. Ugh. <laughs> but yeah, that, there, there you go. There's, there's a selection process, and it's not that too. Con- it's not that absurd. Let's see, just have the roosters play for them. The roosters. Yeah, seeing as the roosters stole their logo, let's just have the roosters play in the World Cup for them. There's an idea, mm. but not Ryan Hall because he's British. Yeah, and he's crap. He's, he's probably got the Rona. Probably. Uh, he wouldn't get picked for France anyway. He wouldn't, eh? How funny is that? <laughs> <laughs> so we've solved it. We're going to have the World Cup 2021 in New Zealand. France is going to be able to come over, pick whoever they want, so long mm-hmm. as they meet that very strict criteria that we set down for them. And I, I think we should invite Canada. Yeah, why not? Sonny Bill can play for Canada as well. Yeah, because we would embrace the Canadians. Yeah. Unlike some nations. There we go. Let's do that. Mm. We've got two two Northern Hemisphere nations in there. Our Commonwealth brothers. There we go. I think that's going to work. Yeah, we yeah. sorted that out, hey? That's what we do. We sort shit out here. How selfish, though, of the English. Wow. That's, that's selfish, man. Now... I don't know if this is selfish or not. Mm-hmm. The New South Wales Blues have come up with their own anthem. Yeah. <laughs> now, I've seen a bit of it, mm-hmm. and it kind of feels like a primary school project. Yeah, it really does. It it, it feels like somebody got drunk and wrote down, because that's what happens in primary school. Someone got drunk and wrote down a, a bunch of crap and they thought, this is really clever. And they showed it to someone. And they were like, oh, yeah, that is pretty clever. And all of a sudden, the snowball started rolling. And, yeah. you know, and it, it should have stopped at some point. Somebody should have said, no, 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 that's all right. Yeah, we were just spitballing. Huh? We're not serious about this. Um, now, the, the Wayne Bennett mind games have also begun in State of Origin. Because mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you heard or not, but... Uh, Xavier Coates has completely cut off his leg in a freak chainsaw accident. He's in oh, for Origin, but you can bet your ass he'll still play. OMG. I've also heard yeah. that there's a terrible, terrible disease going through the Queensland camp, and they're all sick, and there's players on drips in hospital, and they're probably not even going to field a team. But they'll all be there. Yeah, they'll be fine. With, with a drip hanging out of their wrist. Yeah. They'll play on. Um, then we'll see the headlines. He could have died. He could have died. Death was imminent. Mm. Um, I don't know if you heard about this one, mate. The Panthers have been fined ten grand, mm-hmm. and it sounds like, uh oh, Penrith's done something wrong. Yeah, what are the players done? Mm-hmm. Um, the fans breached COVID nineteen safety grand final. Um, patrons at the Penrith Panthers Leagues Club were spotted mingling and drinking while standing, which is currently banned under strict New South Wales liquor licensing laws. Oh, so that Panthers Leagues Club was banned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, not banned, sorry, fined. Fined. Yeah. But they did they did put a picture of Penrith Panthers players mm-hmm. with the article. Yeah. To make it look like, oh, the players are bad boys. What have they done now? Yeah, because I saw that and I was like, well, is is it because they went and thanked the fans or something and went over to them and, and you know... No, the some... players did absolutely everything correct. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's just the legs club. It's just a bunch of their idiot fans. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> I'd expect that from a fucking West Tigers fan. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Apparently we're salty at you guys. So yeah, I've got to stick the booty when I can. It's the big rivalry. <laughs> um, yeah. No, one doesn't care. And the other one's just salty. It's, it's like the worst rivalry ever. <laughs> it's so pissy. <laughs> um, I was going to say, this is a bit more news. Yeah, go on. Hit me with it. Josh Adokar is set to stay in Melbourne. 
that's good. I'm happy with that. Likewise. Uh, James Roberts looks like he's about to leave the bunnies. Good move for the bunnies. Stupid yes. decision to buy him. Yeah. Would Who would buy James Roberts? Other than the Tigers. Uh, you know what? The Bulldogs. Oh, yeah. They'd be a smoky for him. Yeah. He'd be... He'd actually... I think he'd be an all right signing for them. They need to roll a dice on some talent. You know, they, they're not in a position where they can say, oh, yeah, but, but, but they've got to just take what they can get. I, you know what? What if he went to the Tigers? Would you be happy with that? No. Okay. He's the last of the things. You know, it's not, not a criticism of him. He's just not what we need right now. There's a lot of problems with the Tigers that got. Wingers are not one of them. But That's uh, he got, he, he'd, he'd be a good 5'8". <laughs> I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. No. No, that, that's stretching it a little bit. I don't think I've ever seen pass the ball. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. He's not that, a passer. That's a problem. That's why he's a winger, not a centre. Yeah. You, um, you know what? The the Bulldogs should go after him. Absolutely, they should. Mm. You can play 5 eight for them. Yeah. Um, Wendell Saylor suggested that the Wallabies should chase Angus Crichton. Um, I don't know what they plan to pay him with. <laughs> yeah. It depends. What uh, what Christian denomination is he? I, oh, that's a good question. Well, see, so he used to play rugby, and so he has to be Catholic by that, surely. Yeah, because he's uh, he needs to have the the right religious beliefs, and he needs to enjoy losing a lot and playing in front of no one. And yeah, I mean. Well, you know, he's been getting practice uh, playing in front of nowhere at the Roosters. <laughs> oh, shots fired. Um, okay, yeah, just, like, yeah. why would Wendell Saylor say that? Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's Maybe a, because he's been hanging around the Johns' too much. Possibly. It just seems like... I, I, don't, I don't watch Rugby Union whatsoever because it's absolute garbage, but... Uh, from my understanding is that the Australian Rugby Union's best players are former Rugby League players and they were okay Rugby League players at best. And right, That's harsh on Duncan McRae. I remember when Duncan, Duncan McRae was like... like he, How many first grade games did Duncan McRae play? And he was a New South Wales Rugby Union player. <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> He, he pretty much walked into the Wallabies team. He really did. Oh, he not really the Wallabies, the, the Blues, yeah. He but played uh, 34 NRL games between 93 and 98. For Wests? South and then Bulldogs. Okay, there we go. But, um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I just can't imagine Angus Crichton would want to leave the big time to go and play semi-professional football, you know, for Randwick. <laughs> It doesn't, yeah. I I can't see him making that switch. No. It doesn't really, I don't know. I, I don't understand how that would work or why it would. Yeah, and where's the money coming from? Yeah, maybe they're going to pay him. Maybe they're going to buy him a finger. That would be pretty cool. Imagine if you could grow back fingers. See, this is the thing. I reckon they might come to you and say, Man, we've heard you've got a fingering stick. <laughs> how much are you willing to part? Yeah, you know, yeah. How how much would you sell the finger stick for to rugby union? Yeah, and like just take the finger off the end of it, put yeah. a bit of blue tack on it, and say, "Hey, Angus, we'll give you like a third of what you're getting right now to be a bench player at the Roosters." And and they pull out the finger and stick with the blue tack on the end, and he's like, <laughs> "Sold." <laughs> this can be yours. Yeah. We know, you know, we've, we've got some masons that can stick it back on. Exactly. We have the technology. <laughs> we have the technology. Watch us do it. We can make this work. The funny thing about rugby union in Australia is that if you're a rugby union writer, all you do is promise shit you can never deliver. So it's like the, the Australian rugby union take, I call them the mustard disgrace. The mustard <laughs> disgrace, they're going to do well and they never, ever do well. It's just a load of shit. It's, it's canary gold, my friend, and don't you fucking forget it. Yeah. <laughs> Mustard disgrace. <laughs> I even got the 12th man wine wrong. 
Mm-hmm. It's been a while since I listened to it. But there you go. Um, have we had any emails? Let me have a look. Because, um, yeah, we've, we've gone through the news. We've, we've talked a bit more about rugby league than usual this time around, so people mm. should be happy with the content, mm. I hope. Fingers crossed. We've had really good numbers. Yeah, they must like the, the random gibberish. Man, the website's not loading up. It's been very slow. I don't know why. Uh, let me see the normal emails because we want you to we want your message through the website that's what we want you to do not so much send emails um and yeah yeah. oh hang on have we got another one here since there was two no spam no no i just said there was two let me try the other let me try their website again this is fantastic audio this is really good audio. It, everyone's on the edge of their seat. If you're driving your car, just make sure you don't swerve off the road listening yeah, to this. That's right. This is gripping stuff, this is. Yeah, and there's none. None. Oh, man, you could have at least made one up and made that way worthwhile. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We've got an email from, from Prince Harry from Canada. <laughs> we'll do what they do on the radio, and we'll yeah. just make up our own shit. It's like, oh, we've got an email here from uh, Jerry at uh, Bondi Junction. And Jerry asks, Andrew Ferguson, tell us about how, if we wanted to, that we could help with the digitization of rugby league history. Is there some website that I could go to to donate money to the cause? You say, well, geez, that, that's a great, uh, great email you sent through there. What's his name? Jerry. Um, Jerry, <laughs> um, you go to patreon.com slash RL project. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, I've got a, a text message here mm. from from Delilah. Oh, Delilah. She's, yeah. a, she's a long-time listener, Delilah. Long-time listener, first-time text messenger. Yeah. And she's messaged, how does this fucking thing work? No, she's, um, she's wondered, how do I help contribute to one of the... Um, Longest running independent rugby league content creators there is out there. Well, Delilah, think first of all, thank you for your text message. It's always wonderful to hear from you. The way you can do it is you go to patreon.com forward slash league freak. There's no space in between league freak. And you can go on there, there's many different tiers you can choose from. They start at three US dollars a month and they go all the way up to I think about twenty, where you get you get merch. If you're a, a patron at that point, for three months, you get merch sent here. So uh, that's what you do, Delilah. Was that her name, Delilah? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that was it. Yeah, she's yeah. happy with that. Um, also got a uh, a message here via Pigeon. Oh, Pigeon. From, yeah, from uh, Mr. And Mrs. Nathan. Okay. And uh, he's, he's just said, I love everything you guys do, and I don't think you've ever said anything bad about me. Um, yeah. Keep up the good work, guys. That sounds good. So I mean, you know, like he it took a while to get that bike fixed, though, didn't he? He did, he did. But um, you know, peer pressure is a beautiful thing at times, isn't it? Do you know what's disappointing about what we just did? Then I couldn't think of three names that started with Y because I was going to say. Um, I got an email from Delilah the other day, yyydelilah at hotmail.com, and I just couldn't think of three names that started with <laughs> Y. So I'll regret that for the rest of my life. Uh, this podcast, where jokes come to die. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, at least we don't hide it. We we share our shame. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's Probably. true. No, no editing. Um, we leave everything in. It's it's good. It's really good. That's what you want. Yeah. So we've got State of Origin this week. So we'll do a bit of an Origin preview. State of Origin's on Wednesday. Um, I'm not feeling the Origin vibes yet, but I'm sure they'll turn up. Yeah, I'm not really getting anything either, to be honest. Mm. Um, so far, we've had Wayne Bennett with his usual trick of having some player apparently injured and... Mm-hmm. Brad Fittler's Blues have done something kooky and strange, which is everyone's gone, the fuck? That's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. Th- why is it that the New South Wales, I don't know what you'd call them, like 
media types or the people around them, they always feel like New South Wales has to do something to generate like passion or something. It's like, how about you just win some fucking games? Yeah. Um, I put it down to a little bit of jealousy. Oh, really? Yeah, like, but it's a weird thing. I wouldn't say it's a, it's something they should be jealous of. Because the reason why Queensland's got that, um, you know, that whole mateship thing and that spiritual, spiritual garbage and sort of stuff, it's because the, the New South Wales team before Origin just randomly thrashed them for the yeah. best part of 80 years. Mm-hmm. Well, 70, 60 years, sorry. Um, so it was that, that kind of, you know, form the team and this culture there of we're not here to win, we're here to compete and show that we can stick it to the, the guys from Sydney. Yeah. And then when they finally got to the point during that run under Mal Meninga where they were just winning all the time, I was like, this is such a sweet victory for them because it's taken so long to get there and the, finally the underdogs become the favourites, all that sort of stuff. And I think New South Wales got a bit jealous of that because they've never had to rely on spiritual camaraderie and all that sort of stuff that they, you know, the Queensland Maroons are so famous for having. They've just been able to rely on the fact they had the best players and they just had to turn up and play to their ability and they'd win. See, I... And now they want that thing. I don't know why. I disagree, right? I think Queensland is the most passionless state that's involved in state of origin. Because any time that they get down 2 nil in a series, they're the first to go, oh, why would we play a dead rubber? And they, they want to throw all of their bloody toys out of the pram and they piss and moan about it. And then the other thing is they want all of the people that aren't Queenslanders to play for Queensland. Like, they love being front runners. But as soon as they've got to work against something, they don't care. They're just like, oh, whatever, state of origin. And long may it continue. No, like as, I, a new, I, as a New I, South I, Wales fan, I love it. I do tend to agree with, with what you're saying there. I was just kind of explaining why um, there's that whole thing about, you know, Queenslanders having spirit and all that sort of garbage. I always love it when people say, like, oh, you know, that you got to be this sort of player to play in origin and... Queensland have the, and it's like no, the, the games are won by the most talented team in all but one series. That has been the case. Yeah, that one series was a fluke. Yeah, um, that's pretty clear. Maybe we just keep we just keep fixing things here, answering questions, solving problems. What more can so. we do? Yeah, we've uh, we've, we've been fixed very, the World Cup. We we did. It's now New Zealand. Um, Thanks for you know what we don't need a fucking committee meeting for that. We don't no, need to stay in a really high priced hotel somewhere. We didn't which need is a what vending the machine. International Rugby League loves doing. They all love going to Singapore, staying in nice hotels for a week. Well, not all of them. Well, I, my coin likes to go do other yeah. things, but <laughs> allegedly, um, allegedly. But we we didn't need a, a vending machine or a fold out table. No, we didn't. We didn't. Or... We didn't. Those Didn't big they... mare robes with all the gold chains on it, like Mr. Exactly. T. Can I just say something about that? Mm. While we're burning all the bridges. <laughs> you know, it's all well and good to run around and say nice things when you're on the board of different rugby leagues and get in front of the media and wear Mr. T's jewellery and, and say all of the nice words. But it's probably not something you should be doing in one of the worst years of competitive rugby league in Great Britain. Maybe what you should do is look at some of the problems that are going on and try and fix them. Rather than going around and just saying all of the you know, all the the nice things people like to hear. You know, I, I, I don't want to hear nice things about the game while it's dying slowly in Great Britain. I just want people that will do the job and fix it. And that's what rugby league needs more of in Great Britain. And I just wanted to say that. Are you suggesting that tuna and corn pizza isn't part of the solution? I am suggesting that. I know it's controversial. That's a zinger, that. Have you seen that that they've uh, 
done similar deals with some of the other bodgy leagues around um, Great Britain. Like the, I think they did it in the Scottish uh, soccer competition. Have they got a haggis pizza? Haggis, can you imagine? I'd try haggis pizza. <laughs> Have you ever had haggis? Uh, once. What was it like? I didn't have it a second time. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think it's good. one of those things that's an acquired taste. It's one of those things that, like, like there are some places where they'll say, oh, yeah, we eat all of the animal. But as soon as your economy starts getting any sort of momentum, you stop eating parts of the animal. Yeah. That's dog food. Yeah. Um, the other thing that seems to be big that I tried once too was the uh, sheep's brain. Oh, really? Mm. I, I, mm. I tried brain. I can't remember what it was, though, what animal it was. Um, I just can't remember. But these days, like, people that freak out yeah it's it's not it's not great no no um there chicken, you go chicken's feet's another one don't eat chicken's feet yeah there's Terrible. not much meat there yeah that's eat them if you're starving to death but <laughs> un, unless you're starving to death yeah, do not eat them a bit chicken. above the foot <laughs> yeah yeah keep it above the foot anything, anything above the ankle on a chicken is pretty good <laughs> Yeah. But below the ankle, it's terrible. It's all toothpicks. Yeah, pretty much. Just, just, just scratch that shit and move on. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, I think now that we've t- been talking about eating fruits of animals, I think that's a good a good point to uh, to hang the hat on this episode. Yeah, we're wrapping up the first day of No Nut November. How good's that? Yeah, we're going with nude nut. Nude nuts. Nude nuts is better. Dude, that's November. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, uh, everyone, you can catch us on Instagram and Twitter at Fergo Freak Pod. We're on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. So get over there and subscribe to us where you can. And uh, also go onto your, your podcast listening device and give us a five-star rating and a uh, review, and we'll read it out on the podcast. No one's done that for a while, so get in there so we can do it, and we'll obviously you know talk at length about it. I actually think they have, Andrew. You think I was so, I was I was looking at this today. Let me look this up on my uh, podcasting app, Fergo. Oh, like I'm Fergo and the freak. I'm sure I saw some new um some new what's it called comments comments. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. So yeah, we had one on Thursday. No. Oh. Let me let me go to. I'm sure there's a seal. Okay, there's a seal. Oh yeah, so, I've, got, I've seen one here. It's finally come up on the list. Okay, so on Thursday we had one by Eels Up Inside Ya. That's a nice name. I like that name. Lovely. It's very classy. That, that that'd be pleasant too. Every time it, it'd uh, give it a wriggle too. I guess. Yeah, I've seen Japanese pornography like that. <laughs> um, they gave us five stars and said, this is a fantastic podcast. I recommend it to young and old and everyone in between. It really does tick every box. So that was really nice. That's I fantastic. Think, yeah, it really is. Um, I hope I, the eels go well in 2024, you mate. So, you know what? I hope they do just for just for eels up inside you. Yeah. It's very nice. Um, did we do N for Nelly? No, I haven't I'm got s- that one. Okay, on the 6th of September on 2020, and Finelli said they gave us five stars. Naturally. And, yeah, and they had two thumbs up as their little headline. And it says, you can also find them on LinkedIn. Amazing. So that's pretty cool. There we go. We are amazing. Yeah. And I'm then, sure. I mean, we've got someone to agree with us, so, you know, that's not exactly gloating. That's just fact now. And finale. How good's that? Fantastic. Mm. So um, there you go. We've read those out. Now, um, Frigg's going to have to go and put those up on the website. So there's some work for you to do. Yeah, it'll be good. I'm doing it. I actually have a lot of uh, podcast stuff planned for tomorrow. Not like recording, more behind the scenes stuff. There you go. Just peeling, part, peeling away the curtain a little bit there. Exactly. Basically, it's going to be me and the interns, and oh, it'll look like a bunch of scenes out of Fifty Shades of Grey. And a glimpse of those pristine nude nuts of yours. Mm-hmm. 
courtesy of manscaped.com. Head over there, buy anything or everything. We don't mind. And uh, when you get to the checkout, type in NRL uh, as your as a code there, and you'll end up getting 20% off, free shipping. You'll even get a free 30-day money-back guarantee. Yeah, they're You so, won't need it. But... They're so confident about what they've got going, and it's like... The products are fantastic. They really are. I I use them every day. As you should. Mm. As you should. Um, yeah, I, I can't fault them. Yeah, the uh, ball toner, fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, I wish I wish there was more ball toner. Like, I, I would love a vat of ball toner that I could just dip my balls in. Just, like, wake up and have, like, a little footstool. And wake up, have a bit of a stretch, and then just dip down, get on with the day. Exactly. That's what needs to happen. They need to have that stuff in like a 10-litre bucket. Yeah, yeah. Set for life. Exactly. Um, and yeah, I guess that pretty much wraps everything up. Yeah, I think we did well here, Andrew. We certainly have, once again. Mm, mm. Right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We will catch us all next time. <laughs>